so you approached me and asked me to um to kind of share with um people my approach to, to sales um and i think the first thing to to outline is that i i don't see myself as, as a salesperson um and uh and years and years ago when i was offered the opportunity to kind of get into sales i i, I um I didn't want to. I didn't see myself as as being a salesperson. I didn't see myself as that sort of person that had that that natural personal charisma and charm and and, and all the rest that to, to, that the, that I thought you needed to be a um, a successful salesperson. Um, and uh, and and over the years, um, I've kind of developed a structure and, and a method that I've found as has helped me to to way outperform um the the the, the in the in the current state of the rest of the team that I work with. Um and, you know and some of them they 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 clearly do they, they have that they just they can walk into a room and have people surrounding them talking to them and things like that and 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 could probably sell eyes to the Eskimos. But um but what I tend to find is it, it, in, in the years that I've been in this role now is that all, all these type of people tend to be inconsistent and they tend to rely on, on luck. And, and as I said at the beginning, I, I don't see myself as a salesperson. I, I just see myself as somebody who, who is helping someone else to, to make a decision. And, and that's by providing them with information and, and what that information means to them and just following a process and a structure and so for the last um 10 years uh you know uh where i work at the moment and where i've been part of the sales team um for the last eight of them i've, I've outperformed the the, t the rest of the team completely and, and by taking this this structured method uh and just which allows me to be persistent consistent and organized um and and it, it just seems to help me catapult ahead of the rest of them so so i think last year my sales quota for the for the year was the was was the highest but it was also my total was more than the rest of the team's collective total um through my approach and so so my business has asked me to help our sales team to kind of like how we put structure in place and help it help the rest of the team to to to, to be more organized and and to use technology as well to to free up time and there's lots of things that i could cover and you know to probably probably a full a full day's worth of stuff really that you need to sit down and go through but i've just tried to kind of summarize it and some of the the, the key things and just really want to get across that point that if you if you don't feel that you uh, you're a sales you could be a salesperson or that you 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 don't want to be a salesperson that you don't have to be um, it, it's it's really just about following the structure um, so this kind of I, 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 I've kind of put some key areas really but um, I, I'm a big believer uh, and, and this probably comes a lot from being married to Susie Edwards as well, um, but that success starts within. Um, and that has definitely made a key difference to, to, to my performance um, over, the, you know, over the time. And, and I'm not trying to be prescriptive here. It, it, it's, it's do your own thing. Um, but, you know, all I say is just, just do, do your own thing, do what's good for you. So for me, that's like, I like to, on a, on a morning before I do anything else, I, I like to spend a bit of time if I can doing like daily exercise. Um, sometimes I like to meditate or um, visualization, I think is important. Having a breakfast, you know, I always, first thing I do when I wake up is have a, a warm water with a lemon in. And it's just all these little things that, that make, me feel like I'm walking after myself uh, and and my own well-being and my own mindset, and and I think if you if you if you start your day that way and doing whatever ever you find works for you, um, before you do anything else, 
I think it just sets you up for, for a, a great day ahead. Um, so that's kind of where I'd, I'd start with anything. And that, that just isn't just for sales, I think it goes for anything in, in life, really. Um, so, yeah, I, I just wanted to break the, 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 the sale process down because it is just, just a process. Um, and, and I think it doesn't matter what, what uh, in, in environment you're in, it is just a process. And every sales journey, you are going to engage with either a suspect, and that is um, a, a suspect is, is a potential person or a company or, 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 or you know, thing that you want to do business with. So you've not spoken to them yet, probably. Um, you've just identified that they could be a potential um, and that that's, that's something you want to investigate or um, that they're, they're your target audience, if you will. Your next level up from that is, is a prospect. Um, and um, a prospect is, is then someone that you've engaged with or a, a thing that, you, you know, if, it, if, it, um, if it's a prospective house, for example, you, you've taken it from being a suspect house to, to a prospective house. Um, so it, it's, you've had engagement with them. So they've responded to your lead generation um, or uh, you know, you've had a conversation or they've come directly to you and inquired. At that stage, that, that is, they're in the prospect arena. And then the, the next progression from that would be them to become active, as in I, they become a customer or you, you, you know, a, a partner, or um, it's just become a, 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 a deal as such. So the sales journey, just in, in the middle here, uh, every, every sales process breaks down to this. You start off with your, your lead generation, it then progresses to unqualified, you've qualified it you're actively in progress with it there's a possibility of three outcomes okay and that would be that it becomes dormant so <clears throat> you, you it just goes off the boil um, and there's nothing happening in, in the kind of immediate time frame um, that it, 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 you win it, it becomes one. So you've you know you've agreed the deal, you've you've secured the investor, or um, it, it, um, you know you've sold the property, or you you've, you've filled your, your room on your HMO, um, and uh, or it becomes lost. But I, I just wanted to clarify that that even when it's lost, this it just go back into that suspect part there's still a possibility that that, that might come back. I, 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 I can't even, I haven't got enough fingers to count on the amount of times where it, it, in my sales role, I've lost a, lost a deal and, and it's good to lose deals because that, that gets you closer to winning the next one. Um, where then a year or two later, they've come back to us uh, and uh, because of the engagement that we've had with them, and they've come back to us and, and they've ended up becoming a customer. So it's always worth keeping tabs and, and just checking in now and again with any lost um, opportunities. suitable and you would then investigate it
do. But the, pro the point is, is that every time I move a deal along, or an opportunity along that milestone um, uh, pipeline, then you need to then fill the, the, the previous stage with more. So if you work it backwards, if I get one offer accepted that moves moves from negotiate to offer accepted, I need to then find three other um, opportunities that, that become negotiate because out of three opportunities, it's likely that one becomes accepted um, to, to keep that, that pipeline uh, fed, to keep things consistent. And um, so if I then, if I uh, move, uh, get one offer accepted, I need three opportunities in the negotiate stage. I need five in the view stage to get down to three at the negotiate stage. I need eight at the investigate stage to get to the, to the, view, the view stage. And I need 20 at the lead gen stage, so 20 targets that will lead me to eight possibilities. Now that, that, that might be a, a hundred, it might be 150, it might be a thousand, but it, it, it's, you'll start to get a feel for that as, as time goes by. But the, the principle is, is that every time, so I move something along from view, I move one opportunity from view to negotiate, I then need to find some more to put into the investigate pot to keep, keep, keep feeding it along. And if you keep on doing that, um, it, it really helps you. And why I wanted to illustrate that is because quite often what people will do is they focus here on the offer accepted and they negotiate. They get really, because it's that's the exciting bit. And that's where, um, where, where it's like, this is, this is, I've got a good chance of becoming a, uh, a, 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 a deal. Yeah. Becoming something successful. But don't lose track on these ones because otherwise you, you'll move that along and then, and then you're like, oh, where, 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 where do I go next? And you know what? I've been guilty of that in, certainly in, in the property world where we've become so uh, focused on, on, on the, the ones that we're working on that we've not, we've not progressed ones earlier up in the stage. We've not done enough lead generation to keep feeding that pipe. Um, and we all know as well, especially in the world of property, that, that things move really, really slow. So the more things that you have at this earlier stage, the more active and, and, and busy it's going to keep you to, to progress forward. So another key stage of, um, of, of the sales process is, is to qualify it, um, to uh, identify um if, if if this is uh worth pursuing okay so i have a, a this this little acronym that I, I kind of always use which is called born um so b is for budget now in relating this to 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 the property world budget doesn't necessarily always mean uh that the finance either um you know that what 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 price it can also mean what resource uh, time they've got to put to this, you know, um, uh, what what time they've got to put to this, it, it, it's or what value they they've got to put to this. So if you imagine, um, uh, if you're, for example, you've got a, a potential tenant coming to look at the, at the property, the great news is there is you've already got an idea what their budget is because you 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 probably advertised what. Um, what, what the, the monthly rent is that you want for that, uh, for the room or, or you know, the house or whatever. So they've already self-qualified themselves that they're coming to look at that, knowing that that's kind of the, that's the, the, the monthly fee that you're looking for. Um, so often in other arenas, it's really difficult to get the budget out of people. So if you think of, if you're um, dealing with a direct vendor and you, you, you're trying to understand what their lowest price is that they'll accept, um, it, it, it's difficult to get that information. But you can start to use other methods to understand that, such as you know due diligence of, of, of comparables and things like that, uh, and, and testing the water and there are things I can talk about later. But budget is is is, is a key thing. 
authority is am i talking to the right person is this the decision maker do they have the the authority to make a decision is there more than one person involved in that decision process uh, often you know there can be uh, so so it's making sure that you understand when when you qualify that who is who is the person to make make the decision who do i need to be speaking to uh, and it might not be that you speak to them initially it might be that you build up to getting access to that person and um, but it's just understanding um this information uh, when as in what is their time frame you know uh, when when do they need this to happen by um when when is it going to happen have they got a, an idea of that and then and for need which is, is kind of your um understanding what their what their reasons are why they want to um talk to you why you might be able to help them what their why is etc and and i think in any principle any 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 sector or anything this is always is always relevant and it's information that you want to try and track and identify early on in the process you might not always get all of it at the beginning um but if you just keep that in mind as you progress along this is what you, what you want to identify so the other thing that that i i i, I do a lot of it is, is to help improve your chances is is understanding what your risks are so um understanding your risks is, is kind of like it, they can boil down to i think three three areas it's like your customer risk um an internal risk and an external risk so examples of a, a customer risk if you're if you're speaking to a vendor um the, the risks there are that that you might not you, you're unable to make contact with them uh they haven't got um uh, they haven't got a legal um representative yet or you know if you're trying to purchase a house or something um uh or um uh, they that then that you haven't identified the you know there's more than one person in the decision things like that um an external risk might be things like the estate agent um hasn't done their part yet or uh the the solicitor hasn't done the searches or you know various things like that it's understanding risks that are, uh, uh, that you need to try and mitigate and so you build these risks up um uh, 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 through through experience and thinking about what are the, the possible things that could stop this from happening and then it's it's trying to make sure that you, you you've then addressed all of them risks um and, and ticked them off um so that can be a, a really useful way to improve your chances and the earlier on in the stage you kind of do that it means that when you get to late running the process you, you don't it, it doesn't suddenly you know fall out of bed again or anything because you've already hit them head on uh, and don't be afraid to kind of um try and out, out, um, out what the risks are at the beginning of the process and often customers will tell you themselves what their possible concerns are and things that you need to, 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 uh, to uh, um, consider so a big part of sales people you know said rapport building is, is really key that. and i think this is where often people feel like oh, i'm not very good at rapport building you know i i, I, I don't uh feel comfortable doing this I, I don't know what to say to people things like that um but it is just a process it, 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 it's it, it's we're all humans and we, we all respond uh in, in very similar ways but it, it is just a process and, and one thing i have learned is um when people when when you, you, you people are making a decision about something there's actually i i, I find that there's there's three three um decisions that they've got to make okay and the first decision is will they allow you access to to to, to engage with them so if you think if you're trying to engage with an investor um a potential investor are that their first decision is do i want to speak to this person do i want to allow access um the second decision is is about initiating change um generally 
So it's like, do I want to, um, you know, now that I've, I've allowed access and this person is, is telling me what they can do for me, do I want to do that, you know, go down that route? Um, is that something I'm interested in? And then the third decision is, is usually um, about resource, i.e. Who, who am I going to award this to? So if you imagine invest, investor, an investor has a, a hundred grand to invest and they, they, they're not going to be just speaking to you potentially, they could be speaking to other people as well, certainly um, uh, experienced investors. So it, it's, it, it's who, who am I going to award it to? So this, it's almost like the bad news is there's three decisions processes that you've got to get through. But the good news is, is that you can get through these using the, the, the rapport building process, which is typically, I, 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 some people say it's like eight points, nine points, 10 points. I, I think it's realistically in today's world, where people are really busy, really um, starved of time and got lots of other distractions and things going on. It's probably more realistically near towards 30 touch points where you, you need to be in them touch points, providing some value uh, to them, um, be, be interested in them, in them um, uh, you know, you need to align with them. So through being interested in them, you're going to understand what their values are, what's important to them. So that can help you to understand if you can align with them and, 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 and demonstrate how you align. Um, so, you know, understanding their why, uh, what their priorities are, so you can fit in with their priorities. Um, and and all, also, just, just more of a tip, really, is I always find it, it, talk about we and us, not I. So <clears throat> if, if I'm engaging with an investor, it's not how, ca how can you help me, how can I help you, it's, it's how can we do this together. How you know? Let's let us let us sit down and work work it together and, and talk as a collective, like you're a team. Um, I've I've found in in every sales role that I've done that has always really really helped to kind of um get that cohesion with people. Uh, and I think the the key thing is 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 just to listen. Um. Susie and I were talking about um, <coughs> the, the, the assisted sale that we, we, we've um, done in, in the house um, uh, at the moment, because we use it we use this as an office space, <coughs> especially with the kids getting ready this morning. I thought the vets come here for a bit, they're peace and quiet. Um, but yeah, so <coughs> when, when I engage with the, with the vendor of, um, of, of Morland Road, with the owner, he, he really was didn't even I don't think he wanted to sell. Um, he he didn't he, or he hadn't faced up to the the, the the consideration that he probably needs to sell. And he'd been approached by lots of different people, and uh, it, it, you know consistency of, of, of approaching over and over again it was one of the things. But the 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 difference I believe is that is that I'll listen to him. When I finally got that opportunity, you know, he allowed me access, and it probably did take me about 30 touch points for it to, to get to that point where, where he allowed me access to talk to him. <clears throat> um, so much point, so, so I think Susie was like, oh my God, let's just let it go, let it go. But um, it, 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 by, by being consistent and, and doing that, he allowed me access. And rather than me, he kept, you know, one of the first things he said was, well, how much would you, would you pay for it? And instead of answering that question, it was like, well, before I can answer that, I want to know what, you, what the situation is. I want to hear what, what, why, why you've not been able to do anything to, to, um, to fix the house itself. It was in a really bad state of repair. I'm really interested to know what, what the challenges are. Um, I might be able to help you in that way first, um, you know, rather than, than, than selling the property. Whereas other people are, are tracked him down, they'd approached him and they'd just gone, we'll give you 100, 100 and, 130 grand for it, we'll give you 140 grand for it. 
not knowing what his situation was, there's no way on earth he could have he could have accepted that offer because that would have left him with a with a, a massive neg negative equity that he couldn't afford to pay. And it, it, it's through listening that it is is the the biggest thing ever. And, um, one of the, the, the areas I have found that has really helped me in in that approach is actually by looking to therapists, looking to counsellors and psychotherapists and things like that, and, 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 and seeing how they go through that process um, of, of, of listening. And it, it's always about active listening. Um, uh, you know, many, many years ago, I, I used to volunteer for a, 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 um, a phone line, a bit like Samaritans, but specifically for students. And, and that, that, that was a key area that taught me a great life skill in how to actively listen. And it, it's, it's really, really, really helpful in, in the sales process and the rapport building process. But the, the, the key thing there is, is to, is to li listen, engage with the listening, so be active in the listening, um, uh, to ask questions, you know, to, 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 to explain uh, more information to you, to reflect back to them what you've understood and, and to name what you've understood. So, you know, that sounds like you are frustrated with this. Am I right? Um, or that sounds like it's a, it's a, a challenge for you. To, if by labeling it and reflecting back, that shows that you're understanding. And it, it's, it's a skill that can be easily learned. Um, and I do believe it is, it is a process thing. And that's how, how you can, you know, in my experience, build up no life and trust. <clears throat> the, the next step. So um, in sales, you one, one of the key things that people forget to do is ask for the business. And often, I think behind that is, is you don't feel, you know, people, some people don't feel confident enough to ask for the business. Some people are, there's a fear behind it, of the fear of rejection. You know, that, 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 that if I ask for it, they're going to say no. Um, and that's perfectly understandable. But remember, um, getting a no gets you closer to a yes. Um, so it, I, I actually like to get no's, um, um, and, and especially at the prospecting stage. The more no's I get, the, 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 the closer I know that I'm getting to a, a, a yes to allow me access to speak to them. So um, you do need to ask for the business. And this is so much the, the biggest part of what is, people miss out in the sales process, I think. Um, even if you, you missed out all the other bits, if you don't ask for the business, you, you're never going to get it. Um, and I, I mean, a great example as well is, is um, a state, you know, there's some great estate agents out there, but my experience often is that when you speak to estate agents, they, they, they aren't salespeople. They are generally administration people uh, um, and, 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 you know, they do great jobs and stuff, but they, we perceive them as salespeople, but they, they're often not. And I rang up the other day for, um, uh, for, uh, to find out the value a property had sold at. Because we 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 we've uh, got a deal agreed on this um, uh, assisted sale that we've done here. We've got full asking price, which is great. But we wanted to find out what the other houses that have recently sold have, have sold for as well. So I thought, you know, I'll give them a call and just see if they'll tell me because it, the the legals have agreed now. Everything it's going to become public information at some point. So I rang up and I just said, I I'm I'm just inquiring about the property that you sold further up the road because. We're, we're about to um, uh, potentially purchase a, another property on that same road that we're going to we're going to flip and put on the market. Um, so I just wanted to get an idea what you sold that one for. And she went, "Oh yeah, yeah, no, no problem. I can I can, I can tell you that. Um, yeah, we sold it for two hundred and forty-five thousand. Thank you very much. That's really helpful. Really good to know. So that gave us a bit of confidence that." that our offer that we've agreed, that when it comes to valuation, that information should be there and we can make it available to the valuer. Um, but 
that she was just right. Okay, th th thanks a lot for that. So, um, uh, see you now. And I thought, oh my God, I've, I've just told you that, mm -hmm. that, that I've, I've been, I'm potentially going to be putting a house on the market. And she, you know, she didn't ask me for the business in the sense of, and it didn't, it, all it needs to be was, could I take your details and maybe, maybe we can, we can speak to you when you're, you're ready to, to sell the house or we, we, we could come and have a look at that house with you and give you a, a, a predictive valuation on it if you want to. <clears throat> and it's just that simple thing of, of when you're engaging with people that asking for the business. But the good news is, is there are indirect ways to do this. You, you don't have to be so direct and, and quite often, I'm not direct in, in my approach either. Occasionally, depending on it, I might, I might directly go, do you, is this a deal, do you wanna do it? But very rarely, the, the main method that I use is one, whenever I've had a, an engagement with somebody, we've got some meeting, a phone call, or anything like that, um, I check that I've answered their questions because remember, sell, selling or the sales process is just about answering questions and providing information to people that they need to make a decision. So it's check you've answered the questions, ask them what's, and ask them what's the next step. Um, let them tell you what, what they think the next step is. If they don't tell you, then you could suggest a next step. But you, that, when you ask what the next step is, it, you, that's an indirect way of asking, you're asking for the business, you're asking for the business, asking what's next. Um, <clears throat> a great way um, to do this via email uh, as well, and messaging, it, or even as a conversation, is to, is to say, you know, I, I look, look forward to discussing how we are going to progress our relationship, this project, their research, this, you know, this sale, um, it, it just, it's just a softer way of doing it, and 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 it's it, you're expressing your interest to them, but you're not asking directly for the business. It's a really comfortable way to do it, and, and but asking what the next step is, is is the is always the easiest way because eventually they will they will tell you, well, my next step is I, I need to make a decision, or my next step is I'm I'm going to make a decision, or I'm going to talk to such a body, or you know it, it's. They will tell you, and then you can go. That's great. Okay, so when when are we going to do that? When when should uh, when should I follow up with you? Um, basically, you know, agree the next touch touch point. Always, always agree what the next touch point is going to be. Um, so understand the next step, and then when we're going to do that. So and and if if we don't offer it forward, you know, if you're at the prospecting stage, quite often they won't. <clears throat> and so, sorry, we're not interested right now. So, okay, that, that's fine. I'm just going to diarize to, to get back in touch in, in a month's time. Is, is that okay? Um, and uh, that's exactly, you know, what I did with, with uh, the owner of, of Morn Road. It was every time I spoke to him, uh, I, I communicated that I was, I was going to, you know, when are we going to speak next? I'll, I'll, I'll get in touch in a few weeks' time. Uh, or if I dropped a note through his door, it would say, I'll, I'll be back in touch in a few weeks. You know, in the meantime, here's my number. Um, so always communicate that and always plan it and, and diarize the next task. It, is, it, it really helps to kind of keep that consistency. <clears throat> so I think, you know, that, that's kind of like the, 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 the key areas to, to think about. Um, there's a few other kind of things like um, uh, thinking about objections uh, that you might get. But again, to me, objections are, are, are just buying signals. Um, they, uh, in, in my opinion, they're just questions. But they always boil down to uh, three things. It's either a price related question um, and so, and that might be, say, for example, you're selling a property, and uh, or, or selling a room, uh, you know, uh, or, or renting a house out. Um, you you stated what you what you you want for that, and then they 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 offer you lower or, or whatever, um, or they think it's too high, 
then it, it's just have they understood what the value of that is have, have they understood you just you know before you start reducing your price and everything it's like well okay i understand what you're saying there and 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 I, I never disagree with them i always agree and go okay yeah so i, I understand what you mean there that the, 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 you think the price is too high i can see why you think that but then you can you know ex, then explain why why you think there is more value in that price and the other one it often relates to knowledge in that they've not understood something they've misunderstood or they've not um they've, they've overlooked something or maybe you've not explained something to them uh, you've not answered some of the questions so it, it's it, it's it's answering them questions and then the third one is is a smoke screen um, and if it's a smoke screen, I often usually find that it's because they're the wrong person. Um, that when I say smoke screens, it, 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 like they just don't give you what the true true problem is or, or, or query that they've got. Uh, and they'll, they'll just make excuses, uh, or you might even get silence from you know no no response from them. And that might often be because they're the wrong person. They, they, they're not um they, they, they're not the person to make the decision so they feel uncomfortable with that or they need to get someone else involved with the decision making process uh but by asking questions that's a way that you can kind of get through them smoke screens um so so yeah they're kind of like um some key things uh to to, to think about um i'm, I'm not gonna uh <laughs> do it all by a powerpoint uh but I just wanted them as, as like the like the, the key areas to think about. Um, so I think the the, the key thing is is it, it's about about pro always progressing something forward. Um, so when when any opportunity that you have. Um, you always want to keep on making continual progress. Uh, so, you know, always uh, planning that, you, you know, how, how can you pro progress something? Well, there, there's kind of four ways. You, you can have a meeting, um, that could be physical or online. You can have a phone call. Um, e e you can email, text or message. Um, and and social media, and I think they're almost in the, in the, the the order of priority as well. That like a, a, a meeting is always the, the the most productive way of progressing something forward. Uh, a face to face meeting. After that, a phone call. Um, and so often, I you see that people just become reliant on emails and texts, which which have a place. But I would always prioritize a phone call or a face-to-face um, -face meeting above anything else to, to productively progress things. Um, because that's where you can get the feeling, the emotion, um, and, uh, and, and that, that helps with the rapport. It helps you to properly communicate and understand. Because when you put something in an email, you, people will read it. They don't pick up on the tone, on the, uh, you know, the, the, the sincerity. Um, and that can get missed. But that said, again, a rule of discipline that I always have in place with myself is that whenever I try to phone someone um, to progress a, an opportunity, uh, that if, if I don't make contact, you know, it, it, I get through to reception or it goes to voicemail, yeah, I'll leave a quick message. But then I will always follow up myself with an email as well to say, hi, I just tried to call you, um, uh, you know, about and, and try and bring value into that email as well. I, I just wanted to, to um, uh, share this with you. I thought it'd be in, 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 um, interesting. So if not, I'm always calling or to try and ask, ask them or pester them. I'm, I'm, I'm bringing value to them, but to things that I think will help them with their decision making process and um, so it could be an article that you've just read or uh, you know a, a anything like that but i always follow up a phone an unsuccessful phone call um, where i've not connected with them with an email 
or a text or, or a WhatsApp message just to say, I've tried to call you and this is what it's about because you can't rely on, on that that message will get the, 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 the voicemail that they'll listen to it or if you've left a message with, with, um, with a colleague at the estate agent, you can't rely on them that they will pass that message on. Um, you've got to make it, make sure you get that message to them yourself. So yeah, leave a message saying, can you ask Lisa to call me? But then follow up with an email to Lisa and say, Lisa, I just called you. I wanted to tell you about this. Can you give me a call back? Um, and uh, in that message, uh, but don't worry if you don't get time because I'll, I'll, I'll call you back in this afternoon or in two days time or whatever. So they know that if, if, if if, if you don't if you don't call you back, you're going to ring them anyway. <laughs> um, and then the, the, the fourth kind of method is, is social media. And I know in in property world, like people say, and I, I was in that camp for a while as well, that social media is really important. Um, and, and, and to be on social media, telling people what you're doing all the time, quite often that, that's for someone else's benefit, not, not for your own benefit. And yes, it's, it's, it, it, it has some value, but for me, that's not the top of the pecking order. If you want to spend time progressing opportunities and deals, and, you know, inquiries, meetings, phone calls, emails, social media is just there as maybe as a, 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 that, that final strand where you can provide some value. Um, and I, th I think kind of the almost wrapping up really do I say that I've gone forever talking about different things but um, the other key component to this is, is diary planning um, so I always um, uh, use my, my diary to, to keep me organised there's two things it's my diary and my task list um, on a regular basis, like at the end of each day, I will I will look at what my tasks are for the next day. If I've not done any tasks that have not got completed that that day, I will reorganise when them tasks are going to get done. Because there's nothing more, uh, in my opinion, there's nothing more uh, depressing than seeing a massive uh, list of uncompleted tasks that are like overdue uncompleted tasks. What's better that works for me, and so my you know might find helpful is to is to move that date on. If you've not done it, you've not done it. But let's be realistic and then planning when can I next do that task. Um, so I always look at the end of the day and, and, and look at any uncompleted task, re reschedule them, and then look at very quickly at what what my next day is ahead. At the, at the end of the week, I always look at what the week and the next week ahead is in terms of appointments and things like that, making sure that it's confirmed. But I'm always just very briefly, and it doesn't take long, just to, once you get into that rhythm, to kind of like plan uh, or look at what your, your next day is. Um, I also never start my day with emails. Um, I think so. it's so easy to slip into that, um, uh, that world of the first thing I'm going to do is open up my emails and, and see see what's coming. But all that I often find that when you do that, um, that's when you slip into one of them days where you feel that you've not got done what you wanted to get done because you've got sucked into other people's problems, you've got sucked into what other people want, etc. And um, so I always um, the first hour of the day will be um, either doing a really important task uh, that, you know, that eat the frog principle of where whatever the, the, the biggest, most daunting task is, um, get, make, make a start on that. Um, and if it's really big, I'll break it down into, into, into stages. Um, but I, would, I, I never, I, I don't even want to look at the emails because I would just get too tempted to go, oh, that's my boss or, that's that's that then I really need to get back to if this sent to you by email it's in my, it's not important it's not urgent it you know people do do that but they'll, they'll send you something that, that they want an urgent response to but if it's really urgent they'll phone you or 
it, it, you know, they'll, they'll contact you by some other means to tell you that it's urgent and it needs me dealing with straight away. <clears throat> so I always kind of, the first hour, a couple of hours of the day, I, I just don't look at them. I block time, block time in my diary as well. So I always make sure I put time in my diary to deal with my, um, my uh, income generating tasks, you know, your high priority tasks, the ones that are going to get, help you progress that 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 deal to, to become uh, that that opportunity to become a deal. And um, so I always block out some time in the diary to do that. I'll block out some time to do lead generation. I'll block up some, out some time to do prospecting. Um, I'll usually block out some time to do emails, um, to respond to emails and to um, uh, um, and do that as well. So, and then obviously you've got around that, you'll, you'll, you'll have appointments, viewings, meetings, things like that um, that are in your diary as well. So usually if you look at my diary, it's, it's pretty, pretty full. Um, because I, I, I don't have blank spaces in there, where the blank, the blank spaces are being fulfilled with task time, um, um, you know, email time, uh, lead generation time, etc. But knowing that I can be flexible with them if I need to be. So that's kind of the, 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 the kind of key, key steps or, or method to approaching sales. Um, so it's success starts within identifying your milestones of, uh, for your sales process. And, and I think as well, just on that, in property, you might have diff different sales pipelines. So you might have a sales pipeline and milestones for, uh, for onboarding an investor, um, a sales pipeline for securing a property and then a sales pipeline for selling a property um, you know, or, or renting a property. And um, so, you know, th there is that, that sort of difference there that you, you, you might have almost like three spreadsheets if you were three tabs on the spreadsheet or three uh, processes in your workflow to differentiate the slightly different nuances between, between them processes. Um, feed your pipeline. Uh, Remember to, to qualify all, all, all um, your, your opportunities. Ways to improve your chances by identifying possible risks and how you can mitigate them. The rapport building process, the, the know, like, and trust. Um, remembering to, to, to listen and ask questions. Asking for the business or quite simply just asking for the next step. Um, love objections. Just objections to me are, are, are just questions. Uh, they are potential buying signals. Um, uh, progress. Um, you know, every opportunity always progress it. And and on that as well, I always find that the if you've got something further up the the, the pipeline, and you may be thinking, right, this is going to happen next month or this month, you should almost be there should almost be like a daily action on that. Um, a dormant opportunity, you would perhaps have every, every couple of, you know, every couple of weeks or something, you might have some kind of interaction or action, but something that's more active, you want almost like, like a daily or every other day action on there. Even if there isn't something, think of a reason or something that you can do to progress that. It could be a tiny, tiny thing. Um, and, and, and think of, of opportunities to, to speak to that person. I just wanted to check this. You already know it, but uh, you know, I just wanted to confirm this, uh, that I understood this correctly. Uh, you know, and it's just, you just keep on um, uh, progressing that, uh, that, that opportunity by continu continually um, having actions, especially for your hot opportunities. Um, and then, yeah, so just success through organization, you, using that your diary and planning and using your task list to, to make sure that you keep on pushing everything forward. And in the, the last, well, I mean, I, I, I guess I've always been in a, 
for sales or even when when we uh, are starting up as a, as a travel agent that's selling really uh, and then went and working overseas as a holiday rep that's selling really because all, all you were doing there is, is trying to encourage people you know we, we, uh, Susan and I that's where we met uh, as, as holiday reps and um, it was through uh, what we were doing really is we were working in Maggie Wolf and I worked in a beef and stuff and it was like the foot 1830 type scene where people were coming with, the, with their holiday money on holiday and we were trying to sell them a complete block of trips for that week. And I didn't realise it at the time then, but my, when I look back, my approach to it was by being organised and methodical and having a structure and making sure that I had a list of every guest that was in my in my accommodations and hotel, and, and making sure that I spoke to every single one, not just once, not just twice, but like three or four times, and and, and listening to them. And and and, and I didn't realise at the time, but that's actually what I was doing. Whereas some of the other people in the team would just be like random about their approach, and and you know they, they weren't structured in it. And guess what? I was one of the top salespeople when I did that as well, um, and 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 I think that's the the thing that I've always kind of realised that that it's it, it's not about that having the personality and charm and, and and knowing the right thing to say. You know, it's like people think you have to be a negotiating ninja. I'm not a negotiating ninja at all. In fact. <laughs> I, saw, I saw that I'm not I, 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 I promise you I'm not it, it, it's it's just that I ask questions and, and, I, and I listen yes I've gained experience along the way and there's there's little tips and things that I could say or oh, try saying it this way or like if you if you position if you want to position a, um, a, a, a proposal always put like two or three options forward so you, you, you're doing it by choice and, and remember things like silence silence is a beautiful thing in sales because uh, or in any any kind of discussion because when you when you ask something and then stay silent that person will then be more likely to to to, to respond because they feel that uncomfortableness but they're they're just little tips of experience. I didn't know any of them things. I've only learned them as I've gone along. And, you know, that they, 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 they're not the key to the success. It's the, it's the following the, the, the structure. And um, there's lots of other things that I'd really love to share with you about, you know, how you use the CRM, how you forecast, um, and, and, and how you put that together. And, um, and you, you know, people may have questions about, well, how do I make this applicable to my particular thing that I'm doing? More than happy to help people with that. If you, you know, want to reach out, just um, uh, if I can help, I will do. So, yeah, I hope, hope that's kind of giving you some idea of, of, of that sales is just a process. Um, and, uh, and it's interesting. I'll just have a question there. Uh, do you feel like you're, are selling when you're trying to resolve a problem or a difficult situation? No, not at all. Um, uh, <clears throat> when I, I just feel like all I'm doing is helping people. Uh, I'm, it, it, I'm, what, what, what we're really doing is, is, is trying to do a win-win situation. And I think the, 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 the key difference is I, I will quite happily qualify out of something. If I don't think there's going to be a win-win situation, um, I will quite often then just say, you know what, I don't think this is right for us. Um, uh, you know, I look back to the days when, it was, when it was a holiday rep and stuff like that, and um, I had to genuinely believe that we were providing value to the people. Some, some of the people that came you know, into my hotel, they weren't suitable for coming on our trips and excursions, especially early in the season or at the end of the season. They, they booked it with people who booked onto a Club 1830 type holiday that weren't even in that age bracket. They didn't even realize what they were coming into. Now, some people would be like, oh my God, I'm, you know, I, I've got to, get them, got to get them booked on and stuff. 
uh, and I, I would I would just you know kind of have a chat with them, see if they were if they if they thought they were interested, but I would then just suggest other things that they could do, um, and and just think that they're not first because. It, it's it's not for them. It's not for us. And all it's going to do is you have you have these people on them them excursions. You know the bar goals or they're going out whatever to the phone party and stuff that are just going to be sat there looking miserable, thinking what the frick am I doing here? And so that's just going to bring the atmosphere down for everyone who does want it. So it, 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 I think you know uh, maybe not answer the question quite right there, but it, it's it's about can we bring value? Can we achieve a win win? Um, and so. I do genuinely feel that I'm, I'm trying to help people um, and, and that's what I get satisfaction out of in knowing that I've, I've shown somebody a new way of doing something or help them to consider an alternative or help them achieve what they've done. This, this property here is one of my proudest achievements at the moment because it has been, been it's, it's not just been a win-win, it's been a win-win-win-win because We've helped somebody identify that if they didn't do something about this, they were, they were, they were going to end up in a financial crisis. And they genuinely were. And, and you know, um, the owner came to look at the house yesterday, and it was, it was, very, it was a very emotional moment because uh, he was like, oh my God, it, it's amazing what you've done this. I could have never have done this. I could have never afforded it. Uh, um, and, and I gave him the news that because of what we've sold it for, he's going to be getting some more money. And he was just like, I am in such financial dire straits and what I've been out of work since COVID. Um, and that money is going to, going to help me so much. And it was like, it, it was such an emotional moment. So, so we've, we've helped him. We've helped our, ourselves because we've identified a project. This is like our first assisted sale that when we looked at it, we thought, you know what, even if we don't make any money on this, we don't care. It's the experience that we're going to gain through this in building our project team, in, um, in, in, in your understanding what the process is, and we're still learning about it, um, and, 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 and kind of getting the confidence and then being able to speak to other people and say, we've done it, we've done it. The neighbours, the amount of people that have walked past this property, so the neighbours either side have hated this property for so many years because it's a, it was an eyesore. But the amount of times I've been outside or you know just stepping out and and people have just gone, oh, is this is, is this yours? Have you done this? It's amazing. I, I, I'm so grateful that you, it's you know it's been an eyesore on this street. So that that's helped them. And then our investor has gained as well because they've lent us, you know, the money to, to do the actual refurbishment, and they're going to get an extra, what, what you know, uh, 1,200, 1,300 quid for, for lending us some money for, for six months. So that's what I, I love about this. It, it, it's, 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 like I say, it's a win, 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 win. Four, four parties have, have won out of this. And it, 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 it sounds very cliche, doesn't it? But because we've done this, another neighbour has approached and said, you know that, that that old lady over there has passed away. The daughters are looking to sell the house. I've been looking after the house for them. Do you want me to introduce you to them? Yes, I do. <laughs> but because they, again, it's like they live away. They've got this house. That one of them's got ill, Ill health. It's like we can help them, and then it's another pro property that is an eyesore. So, I think I hope I've answered the camp, yeah, your question there. Um, and I think there was one more uh, that I've missed. At the top. Uh, any tips for dealing with objections or just flat nose? Uh, so, yes, uh, when you get an objection, first of all, um, you are never going to change someone's mind. Um, a really good book to read if you haven't read it is, it's an old one, but it's How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale, by Dale Carnegie. Um, uh, it is, I, revi I re revisit that book time to time because it is a really good reminder on, on just some key principles of, 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 of 
of humans and how we work and everything, but you, it's very difficult to change someone's mind. Um, it, it, if you can change someone's mind, it takes a long time. So um, when, when they, uh, if you get objections, remember that they are just questions, so don't, don't be afraid of them. Um, uh, then um, just try to answer the questions or find the answer for the questions and just try to just understand where, where what, what category that question might be coming under. Is it a price related thing? Is it, and remember price might be time and resource as well. Is it, um, is it, a, um, is it a knowledge thing or is it a smoke screen? And that will help you to get back to it. If you get a no, celebrate the no, because that, like, especially at the earlier on in the stage, you know, where you're lead generating and you're prospecting. Like this morning, this morning, I've got about twenty calls to make for some dormant deals in the in the, in the day job. I'll probably, I bet, seventeen of them I won't even get through. Uh, or 15 of them I probably won't get through to, um, so I'll follow up with an email. Three of them, I'll, uh, you know, the, the other five I might have a conversation with, and probably three or four of them will be a not right now, but we'll know. Um, and, and but one of them will probably go, actually, yeah, let's get some in the diary. So all of them rejections, all of them knows. I love them because I know that <laughs> it's it, it's going to get me to, to to the next stage. Now, the further up your chain you get, the more disappointing that no feels emotionally. Um, but you've just got to remember that it, it's it, you know it's that thing you, you want to say no something next opportunity um, or, uh, or you know it, it's 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 not no it's just not right now quite often it, 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 that, that keep in touch keep keep engaged with them because it might not be now crikey with this this example this morning road if, if i'd have if i'd have took the first few no's and and just gone right okay that's not happening then we wouldn't have got it i say it was no 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 okay maybe 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 yes 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 so, it, it, you know, that's, that's how to do it. And, uh, so, yeah, just the title of that book again is uh, how, well, sorry, to put it in there. How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. It, it's, an, it's, it's quite an old book, but it's, it's still very relevant and it's a good starting point. I can recommend loads of other books and stuff as well. Um, wow, was it 1937? Right, yeah. I think there's a, a slightly updated version, isn't there, where somebody's reauthored it or something to try and make it relevant to today's world, but it's still, the principles are still there. So I think hopefully I've answered any, everyone's questions there. Apologies if I've missed any. Um, but yeah, just reach out, get in touch if, if there's anything uh, you want help with. Um, and if I can, I will try my best to. Perfect. Thank you very much, Ross. I've made a ton of notes there, mate. So no good to go, mate. Thank you very much for your time. And um, that was a really good presentation. So. <laughs> Um, I'll, I'll catch you soon, eh? I'll let you go and meet yeah. up on the calls. Yeah, do it. <laughs> Have a good day, everyone. No Bye problem. now. Thanks so much. Bye, everyone.